Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock. It's go time. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Zumile, and I will be your host today, or rather co-host. Welcome to one of the many events that celebrates the International Day of Mathematics. So I'm not by myself. I am rolling with my co-host, uh, Mr. Soshin Subramani. Hi, Soshin. So Soshin is a mathematics lover. Um, he's an actuary. He is also a lecturer in the Department of Statistics at the University of Johannesburg and also sits on the board of the South African Mathematical Foundation. So, Shen, good morning to you. Good morning, Lingyi. Thank you for that. Um, hi, everyone. And uh, I'll introduce my co-host, Dr. Lingyi Lesitole. Uh, so, Lingyi is actually a biochemist. And she also loves maths and science. And she is the director of the UJ Soweto Science Center, which is where she gets to live her passion for maths and science education. And I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> I love okay. science more. <laughs> Thanks, Ocean. I must say, I love the puzzle that you had in the beginning. And I was looking at some of the chats, and there are a few people that were actually getting them right. So how super cool is that? Um, so awesome. I saw somebody specifically who got uh, the, I think it's number H, right? So I thought that was super cool. Because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, before we get started today, I would like to go through a few house rules. Uh, so of course, we do have the chat box. So if you have any questions um, that you'd like to ask as each presenter presents, please pop your question into the chat box. Also, most importantly, please do play nice. No kicking, screaming, shouting, biting, hitting below the belt. So no rudeness, no vulgar language on the chat. Um, we're all here to learn and you never know, you might make yourself a nice friend who's a mathematics genius from another province, right? Um, so, Soshan, please tell us, what are, we, um, what are we up for today? Great, thanks Lungi. So um, if anybody needed some of the um, answers, we'll show them. We'll show them a bit later if there's time, but please keep, uh, if you're still working on them, feel free to keep answering in the chat. Um, so today, these are some of the amazing mathematicians you'll get to be uh, speaking to. Um, and we've got some wonderful talks. We've got Tietzi Ngobezi, who's gonna be talking to us about how he used his mathematical degree to change the world. Uh, we've got Dr. Keegan Anderson, who's going to be talking about some cool uh, ways in which mathematics can be applied in the world. Um, Dr. Claudette Robinson will be using some magic and teaching us how to how our maths and magic uh, intertwine. Um, and Dr. Seymour, Dr. Seymour will be also talking to us about what will make a good mathematician. And in the in in mixed with with it, all of that, we'll have some quizzes and some really fun times. Um, Dr. Serene Ratila will be managing some of our quizzes, so we're up for a very exciting uh, math fun filled two hours. Awesome. Um, so I think we'll get right into it. Uh, you will give us an introduction of our first first speaker, and we we'll move right along. Lovely, great. So to officially welcome you today, we have a very special guest. He is, he is Professor Nyabadza. Um, Professor Farai Nyabadza is the head of the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics at the University of Johannesburg. Um, and Prof Nyabadza actually got his PhD uh, from the University of Botswana. He's an applied mathematician um, and his re research focuses on how to use mathematics to do things like model diseases. Um, so he does disease ev evolution and control, and he's passionate about training future academics. So thank you. Over to you, Prof. Nyabadza. Well, thank you so much, um, Sushan um, and Lungile. It's, um, it's an absolute pleasure uh, being um, amongst, you know, um, you guys and your colleagues. And for me, it is a pleasure being invited to be uh, part and parcel of this wonderful event. And I tell you, it's um, it's always an amazing thing. I always look um, I always look at the 14th of March as a special day in 
the eyes or in the lives of many mathematicians, especially as we celebrate the, the Pi Day. My role here is simple. I just have to say welcome to each and every one of you um, everywhere across um, South Africa. And I don't know if there's anybody who is coming from somewhere outside South Africa, but I would like to welcome each and every one of you and a special welcome to all the presenters and the people that are going to help us share the most important things um, about life. Uh, one of the things that I want to leave you with, um, especially to young and upcoming academics, I want to leave this word with you. And what I'm going to tell you is simply the fact that in life, there are only two things that you have to manage. Things that are coming outside your own personal life and things that are coming from within your own personal life or within yourself as an individual. So the things that come from outside, those ones, they're out of your control. But the things that come from within, those you can control. So you need to learn as a mathematician to manage the things that come from outside because those are the things that can actually impact your career. Those are the things that can actually impact your goals. These are the things that can impact where you are going. So as an individual, you need to learn to subtract all the noise that actually comes from outside and focus on that which is built within you. Because each and everyone is a dynamite. The only things that actually makes that, that dynamite not to explode to its fullest are the things that actually come from outside. The words that we hear our lecturers and our teachers say about ourselves. The words that we hear our friends say to, our, to us. The words that we hear our parents say to us. You, in this particular day, just note one thing, that you can be what you want to be. As long as you rejuvenate, as long as you educate, as long as you, you know, pop out the guy that is in you or the person that is in you. So today it is a wonderful day actually to do that. You are going to hear a lot of things that your, um, the panelists are going to be saying to you and the panelists are going to be sharing with you. And certainly I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what is it that makes a good mathematician. All those things are actually necessary for one to develop their, their career. For those that are young, and, and upcoming mathematicians, we hope and we look forward to seeing you um, joining the University of Johannesburg and specifically coming to do uh, mathematics or any subject that has got um, to do with mathematics. For your own information, mathematics is the starting point or it is basically the foundation of every scientific subject. You can't do good chemistry if you are not a good mathematician. Neither can you do good physics if you are not a good mathematician. You can't, do, you can't be a good biotechnologist if you are not a good mathematician. So as, as a result of this, I'm looking forward to the lineup that is here and um, to the colleagues that are here, please let's give our participants as much as, as we can. Everything that we have prepared, let's download it to them and give it to them. Have a blessed day and have a wonderful day. Um, enjoy your special day or enjoy this particular special day. I'll be part of it and I want to also enjoy it. To our students and to those of you that are just joining, Please enjoy the International Day of Mathematics. Thank you so much. Uh, and back to you, uh, Lungile and Sosha. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Nabata. I'm inspired by that welcome. Um, I want to also give a special shout out to Sinetemba Secondary High School. Um, and I'm giving the shout out because, you know, they've organized to all sit in one venue. So a large group of learners are sitting in one venue and are part of um, today's event. So shout out to you, Sinetemba. Um, so our following speaker is Dr. Keegan Anderson. <clears throat> Dr. Keegan is a lecturer um, at the University of Johannesburg's Applied Mathematics and Mathematics Department. He has worked in the field of celestial mechanics and classical mechanics, uh, classical mechanical dynamical systems. His current research interest includes the modeling and analysis of dynamical systems, specifically mathematical billard systems. So I'm really interested to hear what all of this is about. Dr. Keegan, over to you. Uh, thank you very much for that warm introduction, Lungi. Um, 
So my talk today is about applying mathematics to the real world. Um, now in school, mathematics, you often just want to solve for variables X and Y for polynomial equations or finding the geometric relationships between circles or triangles or to solve pesky uh, trigonometric problems. But we can also apply mathematics to help us solve real world problems by analyzing and solving and constructing mathematical models. And the field of research dedicated to solving real world problems using math is called applied mathematics. But to understand what applied mathematics is, we first need to just define what mathematics is. And that is the study of numbers, formula and related structures, what uh, students or learners might know as algebra, um, shapes and the spaces in which they are contained. This is geometry. Uh, a learner should be familiar with Euclidean geometry. And something which gets uh, introduced at university is the study of quantities and their rates of change, which is known as calculus. With that said, we can now say that applied mathematics is related but different because we study mathematical models uh, that represents real world phenomena which arise in the sciences and engineering. So applied mathematics as a field uses mathematics as well as the knowledge from other disciplines like uh, physics, computer science, engineering, economics, social science, etc to describe and solve mathematical models. So what is a mathematical model? It is a representation of a real world scenario or system using one or more mathematical equations um, to gain qualitative or quantitative understanding of this scenario or system, and also for us to try and predict future behavior of the scenario of the system. And the process of constructing a mathematical model is what we call mathematical modeling. So how do we construct a mathematical model? Well, I made this small graphical representation of the whole process, but it can be quite involved. So we'll start off with our physical problem, and then we will uh, construct a model. And this model may or may not be solvable analytically. Uh, if it's not, we will then uh, resort to what we call numerical modeling, where we create a numerical model, which we will then program into a computer uh, to then try and crunch numbers for us and give us a computational solution. Now, in the process of modeling, you do introduce an element of error. And so we have to verify our models against test data to make sure that what we've constructed is an accurate representation of the physical problem or gives us results which we expect. Um, but talking about um, physical problems, uh, there are roughly two two different types of problems that arise in real world scenarios. The first type of problem is where we are interested in the long term behavior of the system to try and predict what is going to happen in the future, given some past or current data. And the second type of problem, <clears throat> excuse me, second type of problem is where we want some type of optimal solution. All right. Uh, with the long-term behavior type problems, we often use differential equations to model these things. And for the problems where we want an optimal solution, we use optimization. And I'm going to discuss each one of these in turn. Um, so the first type of problem, long-term behavior, this is what we often refer to as dynamical systems. Um, where we consider that the equations we come up with uh, in our mathematical model might not have a solution as what learners know in school. So rather, we instead of trying to find the solution, we want to study the behavior of our unknown variables as they change uh, with respect to a known variable uh, over long periods of time. And we want to be able to, to 
to determine whether this uh, system of equations either display, display periodic or stable behavior, which is nice and predictable. That is what we're looking for. But uh, sometimes we find that these systems uh, display aperiodic or unstable behavior, which is completely random and chaotic, which is not something we would want if we are using our mathematical models to predict future, um, future results. And the way we talk about these systems, like I said, is by the use of differential equations, which I've given an example equation here. Um, in this equation, our T represents an independent variable, which um, refers to the physical quantity of time. Um, P uh, represents our dependent variable, and it's dependent on T, so dependent on our time. This model is ironically for one for population dynamics, so the P here represents a population density. And the dp over dt term is what we call the first derivative of p, and it represents the rate of change of the population density as time changes. So in this example equation, uh, the dependent variable p is considered to be unknown, and that's what we usually want to solve for. Um, but we can also get some quantitative uh, and qualitative uh, results just from studying this differential equation. So where are these applied um, in everyday life? Well, the first is, uh, like I've mentioned, in population dynamics, uh, and these figures represents um, results from what we call a predator-prey system. Um, and this, uh, the figures represent nice, periodic, stable behavior. So we can tell that the populations of both the predators and prey are going to go up and down in time. So it repeats uh, periodically. All right. Uh, another application of population dynamics is ep epidemiological population dynamics, um, where we study the long-term behavior of epidemics and our populations are represented in humans, say, for example, where we have susceptible, infected or recovered populations and how these change with each other. Uh, colleagues of mine in the department make very good use of this in um, during COVID times to study um, certain aspects about social distancing. So it's very important that we understand epidemics and how they evolve. But um, another application which I know a little bit more of is like mechanical systems or celestial dynamics, studying the long-term behavior of satellites or launch launching satellites from the Earth, getting them to go to the moon, so on and so forth. Um, very interesting field. Uh, I love it to bits. Um, but let's take a quick look at our other application area uh, called optimization. Um, and this more arises in financial and industrial type problems where we are concerned with determining some optimal solution to a given problem. Um, but And these problems can include, but they're not limited to, say, maximizing the revenue or profits from selling certain products or services, um, minimizing costs in the manufacturing of products, sorry, uh, optimal placement, say, of wireless network nodes to maximize network coverage and minimize uh, power consumption of these uh, wireless network devices. Um, optimal units of different food types in a diet to maximize nutrient intake and minimize uh, the cost of uh, food type purchases. This is uh, called the diet problem. Um, and lastly, the um, trying to determine an optimal route a traveling salesman should travel between cities to minimize travel time and maybe maximize his uh, revenue from selling his ways. Um, Optimization is very impactful on our daily lives, even though we don't uh, often see it. Um, and scenarios where this is uh, applicable is um, delivery companies determining routes to minimize time for delivery. Uh, and in that same breath, to minimize, say, carbon footprint by finding optimal delivery routes. You can think that if a delivery route is not very optimal, uh, car will use more fuel and that will um, create more uh, exhaust or greenhouse gases that get released in the, to the atmosphere. So this is a very 
important problem which we want to um, find answers to. Um, sustainability and reducing our carbon footprints, uh, reducing our energy usage. Uh, another way this is impactful in terms of sustainability is reducing construction material costs um, or the usage of uh, construction material. A good example of a problem here is what they call the cutting stock problem, where we want to minimize the wastage, for, wastage from different um, uh, cuts in a, like a square timber, timber board. Um, and we have determined uh, cuts that we want to make, but we have a big board out of which we want to make all of these uh, cuts and to try and minimize the wastage, the leftovers. Um, another example of an impact on our lives is in the agri agricultural sector where um, farmers have to try and plan their crops to maximize their crop yield and profitability while reducing, say, their planting costs, um, uh, routes for their uh, farm equipment to travel, so on and so forth. All right. Uh, I can go on forever, but I was given 15 minutes to uh, give this talk, and I see I've got about four minutes left. Um, this is just a brief tip of the iceberg in terms of mathematical modeling and how we apply mathematics to real world scenarios. Uh, there are numerous other applications and problems that are studied using mathematics and applied mathematics and the relevant other uh, disciplines involved. So for com example, the computer science or social sciences. Another example I can quickly mention is uh, fluid dynamics. So understanding airflow over the wing of an uh, aeroplane or um, better aerodynamics with your cars to reduce uh, drag and increase fuel in efficiency, so on and so forth. Um, so I hope I've piqued your interest uh, for further studies in future. And I want to tell you that applied mathematics is offered as a major in, a, in mathematical sciences degrees at most universities in, in South Africa. It's also offered as a second major in some physics uh, or physical sciences degrees. Um, so please look out for that um, and look at universities perspectives documents if you're interested in going down this route. Uh, and just to briefly mention uh, career opportunities with applied mathematics, the big three, which I've seen over the years speaking to students who've done this degree and gone on, going on into careers. Uh, first and foremost is an academia or education, becoming a university lecturer or a mathematics teacher. Um, the second one is uh, IT or software development, um, programming, um, developing software, uh, even though you might not take um, computer science in your mathematical sciences degree, uh, software companies still look for your uh, problem solving skills you develop um, while pursuing applied mathematics degree. And the last career opportunity is a quantitative analyst. Uh, this is working for banks or financial firms and solving problems related to that. And with that, uh, I will conclude my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for this opportunity to present the field of applied mathematics to the eager young minds of tomorrow. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Anderson. Very interesting presentation. And I must say, when I was in high school, which is many years ago, um, I was very clueless on what applied mathematics was. I think it was just, that was in the time of higher grade and standard grade mathematics. So in high school, we were never really introduced to applied mathematics. So firstly, it's a privilege for some of these kids. It's really amazing that we are getting all of this information. Um, so before I go into my question, there is a question on the chat. And um, one of the participants wants to know, uh, is applied mathematics a good major? for students who want to become actuaries? I think that is dependent on the university. Um, different universities have different approaches to applied mathematics. I don't, I don't want to say yes or no, um, but what I will say, at least from UJ and what I know of the UJ curriculum, is that our applied mathematics is more um, geared to um, 
physics and um, computer science type applications. Um, I would suggest for actuarial science, um, applied mathematics may be combined with statistics because statistics um, is also a big part of actuarial science. Oh, okay, great. So uh, one last question. I think we still have a time for one, one or two maybe. Um, so mm -hmm. in your opinion, so I know you did mention that if students want, want to do applied mathematics or mathematics, um, they should check out the different um, university perspective guides. But what I would like to know from you, from a high school student's perspective, in your opinion, being that you've been in the industry for quite a while and you've taught applied mathematics for a long time, what do you think students should essentially work towards as a good mark um, in high school uh, for them to even be competitive for applied mathematics? Because you know now universities are extremely competitive. So what would you deem as a really good mark um, if you want to pursue a career in this field? Right. Uh, so I know UJ's minimum requirements is to have a 65% in grade 12 metric, um, but that's the minimum. That's the minimum. I would say uh, to a good mark to for a competitive entrance to university, um, anywhere at least 70%, but 75 to 80 would be um, sort of the best. Uh, but also there's a the, uh, slightly other aspect to it as well. Um, at high school level, if students have done word problems, they have done applied mathematics. That's what I usually tell first year students. Um, so if you want to pursue applied mathematics and applied mathematics alone, for example, I would say, Make sure you are able to solve word uh, problems and um, to do them well and understand all the things that go into solving a word problem, the, the mathematical modeling aspect of it. Um, so I hope that has answered your question. No, um, it, it, I see, it really has. Sorry, I see one last question here in so, the chat about um, uh, someone asked, Tsekhofatso uh, asked, do you have to do a PGC in order to be a lecturer? So just a quick distinction between, uh, so if you want to become a lecturer at a, at a university, the requirements is to go up to doctorate level, so PhD. Um, so that's numerous postgraduate degrees. Um, if you do an undergraduate degree and a PGCE, then that will qualify you to be a mathematics teacher at a high school. So mm -hmm. just those distinctions for students as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Keegan. Um, next up is Dr. Serene Ratzalal. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat box. Um, because it's a webinar, we can't unmute you so you can ask your question. So rather type it out, we can read it out and get an answer for you. Okay. So next up is Dr. Serene Ratzalal, who will be going with us through a really fun and exciting quiz. So Dr. Serene is a lecturer, also at the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics at the University of Johannesburg. She holds a PhD from the University of KwaZulu-Natal and um, works in the area of point-free topology. Serene is passionate about her research, she's passionate about teaching and learning, and she's especially passionate about community engagement. Dr. Ratilal, please take us away with the exciting quiz. Thank you so much, Dr. C. Chole, and uh, thank you to Dr. Keegan Anderson for that wonderful talk. I really found it enlightening. And from the comments and the questions from the chat box, I observe the same thing. So also from the chat box, I observe that many of you are quite eager to take or attempt our quiz. So let me guide you on how we're going to be doing this. Right, so our quiz today is actually going to be hosted on the platform called AHA Slides. So in order for you to participate in this quiz, I'm going to need you to go to ahaslides.com and enter the code IDM quiz. Okay, I think we can start. All right, I'm about to hit start. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to pay attention to the device that you have used to sign in. Question one of three, you have 70 seconds. Dino moves to the entrance, sorry, from the entrance to the exit by going through rooms. He can only go through each room once. 
Dino adds up the numbers as he passes through each room. Question. What is the highest total that Dino can make? Okay, we've got 51 seconds left. Your options are, is it 27? Is it 29? 32? 34? Or 36? The quicker you answer, the more points you can earn. We now have 25 seconds left. I'll repeat our choices. 27, 29, 32, 34, or is it 36? And your time ends in 3, 2, 1. Did you get your answer in? And we observed that the correct answer was actually 34. So for those of you who weren't able to get it correct, no stress. This is our practice round. And what we will do for you to improve your understanding on how to answer this is that we will post the full solutions to these questions at the end of the webinar. So I hope you're all ready for question two. Perhaps you can redeem yourself. Question two of three. In the picture, each shape stands for a different number. Which number should be written in place of the question mark? You still have a minute to go to answer this. Is the number 10? Or is it 12? Perhaps 14? 16? Or is it 1? Forty seconds remaining. Okay, twenty five seconds remaining. Remember to get your answer in. Is the value of the question mark ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen? Or is it one? And your time ends in five, four, three, two, one. All right, what is the answer? The answer was 14. And we see that the greatest number of, of students that selected this particular one was 18. And 18 of you have gotten this one right. So again, don't forget that we will post the full solution so that you can see the logic behind why the answer actually is 14. All right, let's see who's in the lead. So we've got that George is currently in first place, accumulating 150 points. Remember, you earn more points for the faster that you answer. So the quicker you answer, and of course, your answer, your choice must be correct, the more points you will earn. All right, third question, question three of three. During my holiday, I sent the five postcards shown below to my friends. There are no ducks on Mike's card. Kara's card has the sun on it. There are exactly two living creatures on Paula's card. Lexi's card has a dog on it. There are kangaroos on Heather's card. Which card did Mike get? Is it A, the postcard with the setting sun? Is it B? The postcard with the kangaroos? Is it C, the card with the ladybug and the fly? Is it D, the card with the duck swimming off in the sunset? Or in, on a sunny day? Or is it E, the postcard with the dog? So select your options, A, B, C, or D. We have 17 seconds remaining. And your time is up in three, two, one. And the answer was A. Okay, so it turns out that Mike's card was the card with the setting sun. So that was a logical puzzle. 
And of course, we will show you how using a tabular form, you would be able to use the process of uh, elimination to essentially figure out um, that the answer is actually A. So it turns out that the winner of this quiz is Reed Gilmore, who accumulated 156 points. So congratulations to you. Remember, this was a practice quiz. We will host the actual quiz today at 10 past 10. And so at that point, you will then have the opportunity to win those gift prizes where you could win 500 Rand for getting the highest score and answering the most questions correctly in the quickest time. All right, so I'm now going to hand back to, I think I'm now handing over to Sashan. Sashan, over to you. Yes, great. Thanks, Serene. Um, that was Dr. Serene Ratilal running through a beautiful quiz. That was the practice quiz. Um, and that was so much fun. So thank you all for participating and for engaging. You know, I always tell my students the best way to learn mathematics is to start doing some questions and getting stuff wrong. So uh, hopefully you are you enjoyed getting some stuff wrong. Okay, so um, the next guest is a very, uh, very special person uh, who I've got to know over the years. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Greg Becker. Um, like me, he is an actuary, but he's retired from that world now and he focuses on maths education. And one of the very exciting things that he's done is that he's developed a program, a platform called mytutor.chat, which is simply awesome. And I think is going to be a game changer for mathematics in this country and across the world. Um, so Greg, welcome over to you. Great, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, in my little talk today, I'm going to run through a, a presentation about mytutor.chat and then show you some um, how, how to register. The, the interesting thing is the three questions that you've just seen, they're actually from mytutor.chat. So if you enjoyed those puzzles, I'll be able to show you how you could get access to the full solutions. I'm gonna start by sharing my screen. And then you'll get to see my slides. Can you guys see my, I hope my slides are being shared. Um, yeah, Greg. So in, I'll run through this quickly and we will have time for questions after. Uh, and you can ask me questions about uh, the pros and cons of being an actuary, what's the best way to become an actuary, or whether I should become a maths teacher or a triathlete or something else. Uh, so, so I guess for me, I'm going to run through these um, uh, seven questions. So the first thing to start with is mytutor.chat is a completely free platform. Uh, it's, it's my gift to South Africa or to Africa. Uh, and uh, at the moment, we've got thousands of users we will come to that, uh, all, all benefiting, and you can join the group. The second thing I would like to stress is that it's a, it's a website, not an app, in the sense that you don't have to download anything. You just have to go to the URL, https colon slash slash mytutor.chat, uh, and create an account and away you'd go. Um, you can sign, out, uh, sign up as a learner or a teacher or a parent, and importantly, there's slightly different functionality depending on how you sign up. Of course, the learners get access to um, uh, piles of functionality, um, uh, you, you, but they can't do things like schedule a test. The teachers are able to do things like monitor the students that have linked to them and invigilate tests that they've been approved to schedule. Uh, parents, they're able to do questions, and there are quite a few parents that actually have fun with their learners and, and, and try and see if they can get more questions right than their learners and play games with their learners uh, or, or, their, or their children, should I say. One thing which is a really interesting thing is that when we started, we, we, we chose a way of explaining the solutions to all our questions using slides rather than video. We have started to make videos, but the reason that we, that we um, to complement our slides, but the reasons we started with slides is that we realized that it's very important that people work at their own speed. 
So the disadvantage of, of video is that not everyone learns at the same speed. And sometimes learners choose don't choose to pause the video after seeing the question. They don't grapple with a problem. And it's, a, it's in grappling with the problem and then hear, before you hear the solution that you actually build neural paths in your brain. This is an example of the kinds of uh, solution that we would give for a problem. And at the moment, for the, I think there's 1,500 questions. There's more than 10,000 solution slides. Uh, this is what I've been do, spending the last two years doing. The, the, the tool is used for preparation and event hosting. And for us, it's been very interesting to see that there's a strong link between the two in the sense that people who sign up for the app to do a competition often do a lot of questions in preparation around that time and then they continue to use the site afterwards. But it is interesting to see that those who spend more time preparing for the, the events do better than those that don't. So we have seen that, that there's a, effectively what's called the dosage effect. And yes, there could be some, uh, you, 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 it's very hard to understand the, the full problem and what's driving a good results because people could be practicing off the app, the social economic factors, things like that. But we have seen a dosage effect it is statistically significant uh, regarding practice and preparation on my tutor. These are some photographs taken of an event that we ran this week, uh, the South African Maths Olympiad. Uh, I think about 7,000 people wrote online. And as you can see, it's from all different kinds of schools all, all over the country. But don't worry, if you missed that event, you've, you've missed other events that were on mytutor.chat things like a, a, an event to do with the World Cup that we ran last year, or an event that we ran in combination with Pick and Pay. But we've got another event coming up now. Uh, I, I will explain how, how you can sign up uh, for this when I do the demonstration, safe to say. All you would have to do is go to the menu, the menu item, Maths for Everyone, and select the blue button for register. Then you'll, you'll be able to register anytime between now and the 14th of March, which is Pi Day. And on Friday, you will have to participate in the test. Okay. I'm now going to change my screen and go to show you how to sign up. Okay. This is what the mytutor.chat landing page looks like. And if you scroll up and down, you can watch a video about it. You can see how to sign in. Um, you can get a practice puzzle. Every day, there's a, a practice puzzle is made available over here. Uh, and then you can find out about other events and you can see the long list that's available over here. Okay. Unfortunately, the, the, the South African Maths event was earlier this week, uh, and but the junior school competition is coming up next week. Okay. An example for this daily puzzle here, we'll just show you how it works. As you can see, this is very much like the puzzles that you've seen in the, in the quiz earlier. If you were to work out the answer, you would then have to, to, to guess it, say. Um, let's say we'll guess E. In this case, E was the correct answer. And you can work out, you get given complete solutions. So as an example, we explain that the solution to the problem is E as follows. Um, Greg, we cannot see your other screen. Ah. You are used to seeing the slides at the moment. Actually, yes. the last slide, I think. Sorry about that. Um, I'll have to do this again. We see it now. Okay. Sorry, I'm just. Uh... Okay. Sorry about that. To to explain what's happening, uh, kids, you 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 you're, you're currently seeing a uh, a browser, right? A browser view of the mytutor.chat homepage. Yes. If you scroll up and down on the page, you will see what you what what's available with mytutor.chat. Here's the question that I was speaking about just now. 
And so I'll show you that if you were to give it an answer, you would choose it by like that. And then you will find the full solutions for how to answer the question are given to you, as well as whether or not you got right or wrong. And then there's an advert for a test, another event. These are some examples of uh, just some more information about what we have on our, on our platform and the adverts for, for future tests. I'll now show you how to sign in, how to register. If you were to register, so I'm going to just fill in uh, as dummy details here. I'll actually fill in my name. We'll have IDM event will be my username for today. And I will type this in. Won't show you what it is. If I typed in an email address, then I'll be able to use the, I'll be able to receive the, the results, or uh, receive emails from my tutor, from my tutor.chat, and I'll be able to have the use, make use of the things like the password recovery functionality. There's, there are two steps to the process. You then have to complete some additional information. Uh, and for instance, today I will sign up as a learner. I'll sign up as though I'm in grade eight, even though. I passed that, and then I got 80% for maths last, at the last time I did the exam. Fill in my nickname. I say I fill in South Africa. Uh, I'm going to fill in my tutor.chat, but if you fill in your school name, it would load. Or well, actually, let me fill in Ronda Bosch Boys High, my old, my old alumni. Uh, then you fill in your gender, and you have various options. Uh, so you can pick other, prefer not to say, uh, male or female. For the demographic, it's the same. Uh, this is a requirement from some of our partners. They need to collect this data. Um, once you've done this, you'll be signed in. And you'll start getting questions. <clears throat> and the way that the, the app works is that you receive questions like this. If you give it an answer, so let's say you, you, you're unsure, you would ask for a clue. Otherwise, you would give an answer. I'm just going to guess an answer, and then I'll show you what will happen. So basically, we got an answer correctly. You still get given the solutions, and you can you move left and right to see the solutions. You'll then get the next question, and the, and, and the journey just keeps continuing. If you ask for a clue, you just write in the word clue, and you will receive something like this. Okay, that will help you to answer the question. So for those who like math, who like, like science more than math, ah, what is this? Is this a science or a math question? And anyway, so it, uh, it gives you effectively the starting point for the question. Again, you would just continue. You'd, uh, I'm just going to guess the question. I'm not trying to, to, to see what happens. To show you what happens. You'll get it right, you get it wrong. You get awards when you answer questions right. There's a leaderboard. You can get to see where you are. Um, and the questions just keep coming. Uh, last year, we had thousands of learners did more than 100 questions on the platform. So we, we, we strongly recommend uh, that, that if you want to do well in these Olympiads, that you spend your time um, uh, going through them. If you look on the menu, you can see many things. So as an example, here's the leaderboard. So to, today, this would show you, this is the leaderboard of the grade eights, what their points that they've scored. And at the moment, I'd be in 3,899th position with one question right and one question wrong. As you can see, I'm a long way away from the top. But if you answered 20 questions, you'd move very quickly uh, up the ranks. And you can see what, is, what, what learners in other grades have scored. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, we are out of time for this slot, uh, but that was uh, beautiful and such an easy user journey. And so I think that was uh, very useful for students. Um, is there any concluding remark you want to make? Uh, yes, thank you. So my concluding remark might be that uh, there is an event that's being run on, on the 14th of March, and I'm sure Serene will talk about it again later, uh, the Math for Everyone event. What people need to do is they need to go to mytutor.chat, go to the menu item, click Math for Everyone, and sign up for the event. They can sign up between now and Tuesday, but they can only actually participate on Tuesday. That's all for me.
Awesome, Greg. There, there are some very um, interesting questions about your life, uh, like why did you retire as an actuary and can you get paid on the platform? I'd appreciate if you could answer some of those in the chat. <laughs> I'm sure people would be interested. Okay, so... Uh, uh, can you get a chance? I, We've got I, a... Do, do, do I have a minute to answer? So I guess my okay. answer would be is um, I, I've, uh, I, I worked around the world and I saved the money I earned rather than spent it. Uh, so I've worked in 30 countries. And then by saving my money, I was able to channel my, my interest into whatever I wished. And for me, I stepped back from looking at the problems of South Africa. And I decided that the biggest problem facing South Africa was math education, as this is as it, it has a big impact on skills formation, which has a big impact on the ability of a learner to of ability of a person to get a job, because the unemployment rates are so differentiated by, by um, skills level. And that has the biggest impact on poverty alleviation. So the idea was, if I want to improve poverty alleviation, you unwind the process, and I came to maths education. So this is a way for me to give everyone in South Africa a chance. All they need is a little bit of data and a 400 Rand smartphone. Awesome. Well, Greg, thank you for the amazing work that you're doing and for sharing it with all the learners today. That was, uh, I'm so glad. Great. So next up, we have another one of my colleagues in the actuarial profession, um, and it's, it is so uh, wonderful. Whenever I hear Tsietsi talk, um, I get goosebumps, uh, and I'm sure you will too, and that's because he's literally changing the lives of townships, communities, schools in our country using mathematics. Tsietsi, we look forward to your talk. You've got 10 minutes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Am I audible enough? You're perfect, yeah. Well, thank you very much. So my name is Ziet Ngobese. I am the actual analyst and CEO at We Solve for X. And our slogan is solving the world's problem one equation at a time. So we are very passionate about mathematics and we have taken the liberty upon ourselves to inspire the next generation of actuaries through mathematics. Just a bit of a background, when I finish my, I come from Katlopo, I use, I started selling vegetables house to house using a wheelbarrow. Then I was selling to the school from grade four to 12. And then I went to study actual science at the University of the Free State. When I graduated 2017, I declined 19 job offers so that I can come and assist the, the community I was part of with mathematics and apply some of the actual skills. And just to show you the work that we do through the We Solve for X Foundation on how we put in the real application of mathematics as a language and its practical use. So through the We Solve for X, we we use one, one of our equation called hope win one equation, which is math plus parents minus hunger. So what we do, we, we focus on our model. We solve for X model, which is equals to math plus parents minus hunger. So what we do, we adopt schools and then we teach mathematics to learners and parents so that they are able to help their kids with homework. They understand the annual teaching plan so that they are able to help kids in schools and also work with teachers with a common goal being the annual teaching plan. In this regard, then it helps us to make sure that uh, learning continues at home. But also in the process, we address the hunger issue where we offer the free classes from grade four to 12, and then also free classes for the parents and then parents become part of a Gosa stock fair where they would pay 250 and then they get a Gosa Rehem powered 500. But in the 250, we have a portion of it that goes and pay off our tutors who are assisting the learners in the contact sessions across the country. We currently have adopted 22 schools. We are assisting 27,000 learners across the country. And then we are assisted by 273 graduates. Why we have our system painted, but we struggle to connect most of the learners in rural and township schools. So this is our effort to help elevate the past rate and inspire the next generation of actuaries. And then this is our sessions where parents come to our classes and then we will teach them mathematics according to the grade their kids are in. 
so that they start to understand that no learner struggles with mathematics, they struggle with the topic. So once a parent understands the topic that their kids are struggling with, then they are able to make sure that they deal with the stigma that the math is hard, but also in the process, they get to help their kids at home where they have any level of education, whether it's high level or most of them are educated or they never got an opportunity to further their studies, they are still able to help their kids. So we give them a three-step model, which is using a textbook to say if a child come to them and say, mommy, granny, or father, or whoever is their guardian, they are struggling with maths. The first question the parents would ask is what is the topic that you are struggling with? Bring your textbook. Let's do the textbook example. And then once they do the textbook example with the child five times, and then they get the child to do the exercise. And then once the child is still struggling with the maths, then they are able to re get help from third parties, or but they now, they now know which topic to deal with, other than just the general sentiment that maths is hard and kids don't want to do it, and everyone in the house is scared of mathematics. So we bring that into play. But also in the process, when our when parents come to their parents' master class. Those who would have afford to contribute to the grocery stock firm, they will take their grocery hamper home. And then as part of also adding to the numbers, we make sure that we, we use mathematics where we go out to communities, where we do our hashtag become an actual school shoe drive, where we would collect, um, donate school shoes, get old clothes, give away career books in communities and schools. Our target area being townships and rural areas across the country. And then we also do career days where we go out to schools and communities where we would give out career books about different professions within them, focusing on the med space while we give talks and making sure we provide that career guidance with different partners from Asaba actual society and other partners and donors who come on board, whether to speak to the kids or to give a talk about their profession in any form that they can help inspire and give hope to most of the learners and the kids in informal settlements, rural areas. So our settings, whether it's a community park, we just set up our speakers and invite the community, whoever comes, then get to benefit from our session. So we, we have the privilege to assist as many as possible. But now, we, well, what we also do as part of mathematics, we, we continue to uh, part of the community buildings. We do our calculations in communities where we continue to support, but also do cleanup campaigns with communities. We use law of large numbers. So we get the whole community to clean their own illegal dumping site and turn into a community garden. So since inceptions, we have filled over 300,000 refuse bags, and then we've turned 19 illegal dumping sites into community gardens. Uh, sadly, during COVID, our gains were reversed because uh, yeah, we couldn't gather anymore, so it was quite of a challenge. But we've given the community the skills to clean their own so that they could defend their own areas and make those places safe for themselves and their kids, irrespective of where they are. They have a beautiful contribution to make. And as part of using the math skills, also quantifying the numbers, we run the resource for X student that stop fair. We have settled 2.8 million, 475 students with historic debt through the support of the communities and the parents who come to our classes who donate 100 grand or any amount. And whatever we raise, we go and um, assist students. So this year we settled 1.5 million. Last year we settled 1.3 million based on the actual principle of pulling the risk so that you can help as many students as possible. However, while we have scratched the surface, we have a challenge. We have over 14,000 applicants who owe over 10 billion. So the student debt crisis continues to persist in our country and we're trying our effort to bring these practical solutions. And then we, yeah, like we are inspired, aspiring to do more and uh, we are guided by our modern math plus parents minus hunger. 
which Hanga is one of the biggest risks we have, where we've seen young girls as young as grade six who are already prostituting for food in townships and rural areas. So we need to find a way on how do we help them stay in school, but also address the hunger elements so that they don't become victims of uh, the kind of social issues that we are faced with. And then this has been some of our milestone where we got huge coverage on our math parents master class where we teach parents mathematics and we got them good feedback into the schools that we we operate. And then we have got a huge coverage. And then one of the biggest milestone we have, and also said to find out that one of the schools on our list, there's a child who died in the Eastern Cape, four year old. So, which is still heartbreaking. So, we have one school, but not in the Eastern Cape, called Zindo Primary School. The school had these unsafe toilets for the past 115 years. When I arrived to the school to adopt the school, a child fell in the pit latrine. I pulled the kid out of the toilet at Arlena. Then we started fundraising. We ran an intensive mathematically based campaign to try and raise funds for the school. And then we, yeah, so we, we, we had different posters, 116 reasons why you should donate, all these other fundraising efforts we did. And then we, then we managed to raise funds and build. So these are the toilets we completed after a year of fundraising for the school. These were the new toilets we have built for them. So it's one of our accomplishments. However, this is one school out of the 35 schools we have visited with the same issue. And then there's the school that is number 34. Two days ago, a child was found dead in the toilet in the in the pit latrine. So it's still heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking to see the state of rural schools across the country. And so this is our way of saying math is the language and we solve for X. We solving the world's problem one equation at a time. We are inspired by mathematics and we are inspiring the next generation of actuaries. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I'll be taking questions thereafter. Lovely, thank you TFT. And uh, yeah, thank you for reminding us about the issues that exist and for showing us ways that we could help solve them. Um, so we, there is a one question that I think would be a useful one for you to answer live. Um, well, how does one register to be a tutor at We Solve for X? Are there specific qualifications that you require? And what should people do if they're interested in this? So yeah, our approach, because we adopt schools, we don't do individual ones. So we do a recruitment drive. So we would advertise where once we have adopted the school and get people within the area who are usually within a walking distance or who could reach to the school every Saturday. Because our classes, you become more, more than a tutor, you become a teacher because you must teach the kids the whole year and then you move them with the next grade. So we need people who can reach the school on a continuous basis. So once we have adopted the school, then we would do the recruitment drive. So currently we, we, we are not recruiting, but once we get more schools, then we'll be in a position to assist. But then it, it needs to be a school close to you because you cannot recruit you for a school in the Eastern Cape or Gumalanga while you're in Houtings because you won't be able to get there consistently so that you help the kids throughout the year. Okay. And Tieti, so if somebody does want to find out more or propose a school or maybe is close enough to be at one of your schools, what do they need to do? So they will contact us on our on our info at resolve4x.co.za. That's where they could get hold of us, or they can give us a shout in our social media platforms at resolve4x. Then we will be able to respond to them and guide them and see if they're within the area where we're operating, or we can give them the blueprint on how to do it in their own community where they are based. Lovely, great. So let's all follow. We solve for X and stay connected to the amazing work that TRT is doing. Thank you very much, TRT. No, thank you. Thank you. And yeah. Yes, you yes. Say yes. Say yes. Or two. Uh, what you're also proud of. So this year, we on the hashtag become an actuary. We have placed 753 first year students across the country coming from our program to study actual science across the country. So, yeah, we are on our road to 1 million actuaries. So we are, we are having an impact on the profession. So thank you. 
simply amazing. Thank you, TFC. Okay, next up we have um, Dr. Sareen Ratilal, who's back again for more fun questions. And this time it's the main quiz. So prizes up for grabs, get your fingers ready. Over to you, Sareen. Thank you, Sarshan. So I think everybody's just waiting for this moment. It is now your opportunity to participate in the quiz once again, exactly the same platform. And you now have an opportunity to win those amazing prizes that I had mentioned. Right, so you're going to go back to ahaslides.com and you're going to enter in the following code. You will enter IDM23. Question one of four. In the garage shown in the picture, vehicles can only move forward or backward, but cannot turn. What is the smallest number of vehicles that have to move for the black car to be able to exit the garage? Is the answer two, three, four, five, or is it six? You have 40 seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Remember, the question is: What is the smallest number of vehicles that have to move for the black car to be able to exit the garage? I see our participants have rised as well. So we've got seventy-two people participating in the quiz. Time's up. The correct answer is four. And we had that 20 students had selected this solution. All right, so don't stress. There are three more questions to go and you have an opportunity to redeem. Okay, let's go on to question two. Question two of four. Andrew wants to complete the picture. So that each row, each column, and each set of four circles connected by line segments contains the four numbers one, two, three, and four. What number should he write in the circle containing the question mark? So should he enter the value of one, or two, three, or is it four? Or perhaps the answer cannot be determined. 40 seconds remaining. Twenty five seconds remaining. Is your answer one, two, either three? Four or cannot be determined. Ten seconds to go. And the answer is the answer is two. All right, so let's see who's in the lead. In the lead, in First position, we have Danita Reddy with 179 points, with Kaylee Campbell hot on her heels with 154 points. Let's see, we've got two more rounds to go. So two more questions. Let's see what happens. Question three of four. Using the four digits of 2023 once, what is the smallest number you can make using the four digits and only plus, minus, and multiplication? So that means you can only use the digits two, zero, two, three, and you can only use plus, minus, and multiplication. So what is the smallest value? Is it minus 12? Is it minus four? Is it zero? 
Perhaps it's one, or maybe the answer is two. You now have 32 seconds remaining. We want the smallest number using only the digits 2023 plus, minus, and multiplication. 10 seconds remaining. What is the answer? And the answer is. Well, the answer was minus 12. That is the smallest value that you could create using 2023 plus, minus, and multiplication. But we will share with you the full solutions afterwards. Let's go on to question four. Question four of four. To warm up before a match, a cricket team stands in a circle in the order of their shirt numbers ranging from 1 to 11. So this is seen in the diagram. We've got a circle with the numbers 1 to 11 on it. The player with one on their back passes the ball to the third person on their left. All players pass the ball to the third player on their left. So player one passes the ball to player four, player four passes to player seven, player seven passes to player 10, and the pattern continues. The question is, what's the shirt number of the last person to get the ball? Assuming that each person must receive the ball and then the game ends. Okay, so we follow the pattern. We pass to the third person on the left and we want to know who is the last person to receive the ball. Assuming each person must receive the ball for this process to stop. You have 23 seconds remaining. Is the answer seven? Is it eight? Is it player nine? Player 10? Or is it player 11? 10 seconds remaining. Okay, and our time's up. And the answer is, the last person to receive the ball in that process was player nine. Okay, we can take a look at our leaderboard, but do keep in mind that I will announce the winners at the end, announcing who got first place in each of the categories. But the overall winner of today's quiz was Kaylee Campbell with 309 points. So congratulations to you, but do stay tuned for the last part of um, today's program where I will announce the full set of winners. So I now hand back to Dr. Sitole. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ratulal. Well done, Kaylee. Um, and thank you to all of you who participated in the quiz. Really, really nice number there. All right, so our next um, talk is all the way from, you, uh, from GZN. Um, we have Dr. Simo Muteta. So Dr. Simo is a mathematician and he is currently a senior lecturer in mathematics at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. He is an education enthusiast and a founding director at Mtetwa Matics. So Dr. Simo will be telling us today about how you can become a good or rather how to become a good mathematician. Dr. Simo, you up. Thanks, Lumi. Good morning, everybody. Uh... My name is Simo, as Lumi has introduced me. Uh, today, I want to speak about mathematics. It's an international day of mathematics as well. So I want to speak about mathematics. Specifically, I want to talk about how to become a mathematician, a good one at that. So let's start. My short talk is structured in this manner. I'll first define what a mathematician is, and then give you some examples of well-known mathematicians, and then speak a bit about how to become a good mathematician, and then give you some examples of South African good mathematicians. Of course, these will be just examples. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list. Then I'll give you a tip of the day. So, what is a mathematician? Well, a mathematician is someone who practices mathematics. And by practice, what do I mean by that? When you teach or study or use mathematics anyhow, or do research in mathematics, 
you actually practice mathematics. We refer to you or we consider you as a mathematician. But we have what we call professional mathematicians, which are mathematicians who would be usually employed in a higher uh, institution of learning or in a, in a certain research institute. So it's a mathematician hired to do mathematics at a higher learning or uh, a research institute. Someone like me, uh, Dr. Lumi Lesitole, Dr. Serin Ratiro, and, and everybody, those will be professional mathematicians. Now, let me give you some examples of well-known mathematician. I'm sure you can see some geometry happening there, a circle with a uh, right angle triangle squeezed inside there. This man here is a very famous mathematician. What is he famous for? His name is Euclid, uh, the father of, or we consider him as the father of geometry. Uh, he's famous for uh, pioneering what we learn in high school as Euclidean geometry these days. He also contributed to other fields of mathematics like number theory and logic, but his main thing was geometry. There is another good mathematician, famous, well-known, and that is the man on your screen right now with a beard just like me. Uh, he's famous for what we call Pythagoras theorem these days. Uh, a theorem that states that the sum of the squares of true sides of the right hand triangle is equal to the square of the longest side. This man is the first man to ever prove that to ever prove such a theorem, but the statement of that theorem was known way before he even existed. But in mathematics, if you prove something, we usually just attribute that to you or give your name uh, to that. Now, these are old people. If you notice Euclid and Pythagoras, let me give you a relatively younger person. And this person here is famous, well-known. Uh, he's known as Terence Tao. Uh, well, known for many things, but particularly for proving what we call Green Tau's theorem, uh, which is a theorem, I mean, a specific case of uh, a conjecture that was stated by another mathematician, Paul Edosh. Paul Edosh explained that conjecture to Terence when Terence was 10 years old and about 20 something years later. Actually, less than that, Terence was was able to show a specific case of that conjecture. And that ended in what we call the Fields Medal. In 2006, I think Terence was 30 at the time. So this is another example of a good mathematician that is well known. Now, what do I mean by a good mathematician? A good mathematician would be a mathematician first, but that serves mathematics and the mathematics community. At large, what do I mean when I say self? We serve mathematics by doing research to develop mathematics, to advance mathematics. So that's how you serve mathematics. So a mathematician that does research to advance mathematics, we consider such a mathematician as a good one. And the way to serve the community of mathematicians is to share your knowledge uh, of mathematics with other mathematicians or even collaborate with other mathematicians. Uh, and the father of collaboration, I just put a picture here of Paul Edosh. Paul Edosh was a, a very, very good mathematician known as the father of collaboration because he collaborated with over 500 other mathematicians um, with I don't know, I think he has more than 1,500 published papers. So this is a typical example of a good mathematician. Now, let me give you some example, some examples of good mathematicians in the South African context. Uh, 
some of you here might know this man, but the younger guys may not know him. His name is James Raftree. He taught me at some point he's a logician, one of the world's leading logicians uh, at the moment. He's, a, he's an A-rated professor by the National Research Foundation. So this is an example of a good mathematician who shares his mathematics with other people and do research in mathematics to advance mathematics. I think in 2014, he received an award for advancing mathematics. 2014, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a good, a good example of a good mathematician. Another person would be Temba Duga from UNISA, uh, one of the best concrete topologies that we have right now. Um, another person that I can that I could think of top of my head was Professor Lois Onong. Uh, he was the former, I mean, he's the former vice chancellor of the Vets University. I'm saying I'm putting him under good mathematician. If you look at how I define a good mathematician is someone who shares knowledge. And Professor Lois Onong is a prime example of that. Most of young South Africans, uh, South African mathematician has had influence from this man in one way or another. So he is good at sharing information with other mathematicians. Hence, I put him there as a, an example of a good mathematician. Of course, as I said, this list is not exhaustive and I tried not to be biased. If I were to put my own favorite mathematicians here, it would have been uh, different faces, trust me. Now, let me leave you with a tip of the day. Uh, I'll just say, don't belong where you don't belong. And my hope is that you belong to mathematics just like me. And that's where you're going to spend your longest time. Thank you. Thank you, Simo. Interesting tip. <laughs> Very interesting tip. Thank you. Um, thank you for that talk. I'm surprised you didn't put yourself on there. You don't regard yourself as a good mathematician? I did say that if okay. you put my favorite people there, it would have been different faces. Understood. So um, I do have one question. I just want to check if there are any other any questions in the chat. Uh, but while I do that, I'll ask mine. So I really would like to know, because I think a lot of the kids would be interested in knowing as well. Um, when did you know that you want to become a mathematician? And most importantly, what inspired you to pursue this field? Well, I was in primary school. Uh, I remember my teacher, my mathematics teacher, asked me what, what I want to be. I told her that I wanted to be a mathematician, and she asked me, what is a mathematician? I said, it's someone who writes books uh, <laughs> about mathematics. And this, 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 that was my perspective back then. Uh, but I think I... Uh, I solidified that thinking when I was in high school that I really want to be a mathematician. And someone who inspired me was uh, when I was in high school, there was um, a visit by someone from the University of Zululand. He's now Dr. A.S. Mabasu. That person came and taught and then singled me and spoke with me outside. Then that's when I knew that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a mathematician. Oh, wow, that is super cool. In primary school, I yeah, wanted right. to be something completely different in primary school. So <laughs> that's really inspiring. <laughs> so last question from the chat. Um, and this is a really cool question because it's high school kids, and I think this is where they are, and they're struggling with maths. So somebody right. wants to know, how was your maths? Has your maths always been good um, throughout primary school and high school and into university? Yeah. Uh... I guess that's why my teachers asked me what I wanted to be. Uh, my maths has always been intact. I, I would I would get average marks for other things, and then my maths would be like ninety something throughout the primary and and high school actually. I think even in high school, I got a ninety seven for mathematics, in metric, and then for other things I don't know. 
I give you a phone call. <laughs> Very impressive. And it's funny that you say that because a lot of the time that's what we see. Mad geniuses struggle so much in the other subjects. Not necessarily struggle, but they really don't uh, put the same effort in other subjects. Yeah. Right, so, but right, thank you right. so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mtetwa. Um, Dr. Mtetwa is available to answer any other questions you may have um, in the chat. So next up, we have um, Dr. Robinson. Dr. Claudette Robinson. Uh, she's also from the University of Johannesburg. She began her uh, higher um, education career at the University of Johannesburg uh, by first enrolling for a bachelor's degree in mathematics. Um, and that was a major mathematics and chemistry. Then she obtained uh, her honors degree in mathematics and completed her master's degree and is now pursuing a PhD degree in mathematics. So she's currently a lecturer in the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics. And she will be talking to us today about math magic. So I'm really interested in hearing what that is about. Over to you, Dr. Rosen. Uh, thank you so much. Um, okay, so I we're going to have a little bit of fun with this talk. Uh, like she, uh, the host just said, I'm going to do a little bit of magic um, involving mathematics. So hopefully you will be able to use some of these tricks and to go and impress your friends or your teachers or even your little brother or sister. So in the first trick, I will attempt to read your mind. So I want you to think of a two-digit number and just keep it to yourself and then add the digits together. So just add the two digits in the number together. Then subtract the answer from your original number. So subtract the answer from your original number. So I want you now to remember this answer. I am going to call that your magic number. So then locate your magic number in the table on your screen and then concentrate on the symbol next to the number. So did you find your magic number? Are you concentrating on the symbol next to it? Okay, so the symbol that you are looking at is this free leaf clover or the club card um, icon. And did I get it right? If you did follow the instructions, you I would have um, made right prediction. So why is this? How does this work? Let's go through the steps together. So any two-digit number can be written as 10x plus y. For x and y will be the digits, of course. So think about the number 53, for instance. We can write that as 10 times 5 plus 3. So if we then add the two digits, then we're going to get the number x plus y. So if we then subtract x plus y from the original number, which was then 10x plus y, the y's will cancel and you will end up with 9x, which is the magic number that you got. So I don't know what your original number was, but from this, I can see that your magic number is a multiple of nine. So in the table, um, all the multiples of nine, um, if you look at that, you will see that all the multiples of nine um, have, or they all of them have the club gods icon. So that is how that trick will work. So maybe you can go and use that to impress your friends. Uh, so let's move on to the next trick. And I'm going to call that trick the prime number trick. So in this case, I want you to think of a prime number greater than three. So for instance, five, but it can be any number. You can choose any uh, two digit or, or three digit even, but any prime number greater than three. Then square it. So in other words, multiply the prime number by itself. So from um, that to that answer, add 17. So add the number 17 to the answer that you got after you've squared your prime number. Okay, so then divide this answer by 12. 
So divide your answer by 12. So you will then see that the remainder is 6. So again, if you did do um, if you did the calculations correctly, the remainder will be 6. So why is this? Well, every prime number can be written in the form 6k minus 1 or 6k plus 1, where k is a natural number. Okay, but this is just for prime numbers greater than 3. Okay, so just think about that for a moment. If we take the prime number 7, we see that we can write that as 6 times 1 plus 1, whereas 11 can be written as 6 times 2 minus 1. So this is the trick that we um, use for this um, magic trick. Okay, so let n be the prime number that you chose. So suppose your prime number can be written in the form 6k minus 1, um, where k is a natural number. So the next step was to square that number. So if we square n, it means we need to square that bracket, the 6k minus 1. So if we expand that, you will get 36k squared minus 12k plus 1. And then we have to add 17 to that. So the, you're going to add 17, of course, to the 1 and then end up with 18 there on the right. And what we then can do is we can rewrite the 18 as 12 plus 6. And then from the first three terms, we take out 12 as a common factor. So we are dividing by 12, in other words. So I'm going to take out the 12 as a common factor. And now we've rewritten this um, expression here at the bottom as 12 times another integer plus 6. And that just means after we've divided by 12, we end up with a remainder of 6. And of course, the same thing will work uh, if your prime number has the form 6k plus 1 instead of the 6k minus 1. So it will only be a sign difference uh, there, but it's exactly the same. So you can go and check that on your own and convince yourself. Um, okay, so for my last trick, I first want to show you quick, uh, a quick way to multiply any two digit number by 11 without using a calculator or even a pen. Um, and paper. The idea is this. Let's say we want to multiply 53 by 11. So we can do that, that in a matter of sec um, seconds. How do we do that? You take the two digits, the 5 and the 3, and you add them together to get 8. And then you write the 8 between the 5 and the 3. So remember my original number was 53. So we just write the sum of the 5 and the 3 between um, the, the 5 and the 3, the 8. You're going to write it between there. And you can go and check on your calculator. If you multiply 53 by 11, you are going to get 583. Okay, so that's a quick way of multiplying any two-digit number by 11. But what if we have something like 85 and we want to multiply that by 11? Well, of course, if we now add the 8 and the 5, you are going to get 13, which is greater than 9. But you cannot add or insert the 13 between the 8 and the 5. And the answer is not 8,135 if you multiply 85 by 11. But instead, you write the 3 between the 8 and the 5. And then add the 1 to the 8 to get 955. And you can now go and check on your calculator. But if you multiply 85 by 11, you will get 935. So why did I show you this? Because I want to use it for my last um, trick. So this trick, I'm just going to show you how it works. So you, so you can go and... Um, do it or try it with your friends, but you will need a volunteer. And trust me, you will look like a genius if you uh, can get this trick right. So, like I said, you will need a volunteer. And what you will do is you will then um, turn away from your friend and ask him or her to write down any two numbers underneath each other. For instance, you can write down three and seven. This trick does work with any two numbers. 
But because you will ask your friend or your volunteer to add these numbers, I suggest maybe sticking to one-digit numbers or even two-digit numbers, um, just to make it easier. So the next step would be to ask your, your friends to add these two numbers together and write them under the answer, under these two numbers. So 3 plus 7 is 10. So we can add it underneath the two original numbers. The next step would then be to add the last two numbers together and again write the answer underneath the previous three numbers. So 7 plus 10 will be 17. And your friend can continue like this and you can ask him to write down 10 numbers in this way. So you will always add the previous two numbers. So 10 plus 17, of course, will give us 27. Then if we add 17 to 27, you are going to get um, 44. And then 27 plus 44 will be 71. And we can continue in this way. 44 plus 71 is 115. And then 71 plus 150, 186. And finally, if you add 115 to 186, you will get 301. So once your friend has written down 10 numbers underneath each other like this, you can ask him or her to add these 10 numbers together. So obviously, this will take him uh, a little bit of time. And he must then write down the answer. And once he's written down the answer, you can turn um, around again and then in a matter of seconds, you will be able to tell him what the sum of these 10 numbers are by simply taking the fourth number from the bottom, 71, and multiplying that by 11. And you will see then that you get the same answer. So why does this work? I will quickly show you. So suppose your friend um, wrote down the numbers X and Y underneath each other. Adding these will give you x plus y, and if you continue in this way, y plus x plus y is going to give you x plus 2y, and if you add x plus y to, to the x plus 2y, you're going to get 2x plus 3y, and so on. If you add these numbers at the end, if we add all 10, you will end up with 55x plus 88y. And of course, both 55 and 88 are multiples of 11, so we can take out 11 as a common factor from that. And if you then look closely, the sum that you get inside the bracket is exactly the fourth number from the bottom or the seventh number from the top. So all that you have to do is to take the fourth number from the bottom and multiply that by 11, which you now know how to do uh, in a matter of seconds. So go and have fun with this and go and increase your friends. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. That was really cool. I like the, the, the math magic. I see you having a lot of hearts and claps. And so it was really cool. Um, just one question. I mean, you're showing like all these really cool tricks. Do you have, and this is a long shot. Do you have any super cool tricks for learners who are really trying very hard to study or rather practice mathematics every day? So some of the tricks to keep them energized, um, you know, so tricks just to help them improve also um, the mathematics. Well, I mean, and I guess this might so sound a little bit cliche, but the best way to master mathematics is to practice, practice, practice. It's not, I mean, my teacher used to say, it's not a spectator sport, you can't mm -hmm. watch it. You have to take pen and paper and you have to do it. I mean, Absolutely. and that's, I know, I know it sounds cliche, but that, that's what's worth. Worth and it's true. Um, and it's true. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely true. Thank you so much. Um, also, again, Dr. Robinson is available to answer any other questions you may have in the chat. So please type those questions. All the speakers are actually still available. So I'm going to call back uh, Dr. Serene Ratalau, who is going to announce the winners, uh, winners of the quiz, and also the winner for the Super Scientist competition that has been running for about three weeks now or so. Um, Serene, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Sitole. So I think this is the moment that most of you have been looking forward to. It's that time of the program where I am now going to announce our winners. So let me get this slideshow into full screen. Right, so what were the competitions that we ran? Well, we had run a competition that was hosted by super scientists. There were two categories. 
the super mathematician drawing. So you could have submitted a drawing of what you think a super mathematician looks like, as well as there was a second category for mathematical memes. So you could have submitted a meme and provided us with an explanation. And of course, we had an adjudication panel and students were selected. So what I'm showing you is some of the submissions for the super mathematician category. Um, the, one of the adjudicators is um, Dr. Justin Yarrow, and he was very impressed with the amount of creativity and the submissions that we had received. Uh, we had actually even received a submission from a student in India. As you can see, um, that was the drawing at the bottom of his super mathematician. So here is the announcement of the prize winners. There were so many good ones that we, we couldn't just choose one student in third position, but just to announce the student in first position is Wandile Mbukazi from grade 10 at Kakaza High School. In second position, we have Onan Bakola. In third position, we have Spiwe Madlopa. We also have Oluwadam Milola Adeyemi, as well as two more students that were selected. We have Arthur Mashlangu, as well as Motsama Boy Tumelo. So congratulations to each of the students that had won a prize in the super mathematician drawing category. I will tell you shortly how you would be able to um, redeem your prize. Okay. I'm just trying to change my slide, but that is not taking place. All right, now we're going to be talking about the meme category. Once again, very creative, lots of submissions received where there were memes about some mathematical meaning and various explanations were provided. Okay, here is another slide of some of these submissions that we had received. And Dr. Justin Yarrow had selected the following. So we have three students in third position. We have Dirish Balgobin, we have Aman Pati in third position, as well as Siabonga Martin, uh, who is a student at UJ. In second position, we have Shaquille Kiran Mystery. And now, for the student who submitted the best meme, we had chosen this one because of the great explanation and its links to the quadratic formula. It's Kogone Arnold Masia, a second year student who had submitted from the University of Johannesburg. So congratulations to all of the students who had submitted a meme or a drawing of a super mathematician for the super scientists. Uh, competition. There are various prizes, as you had seen from the original flyer. These cash prizes will get to you, but in order for them to get to you, you're going to have to send an email to serene.rathilal at nitex.ac.za. This is the email address that you had originally submitted your entries to. So simply reply to that email address and submit the following information. What prize were you awarded? Because we will verify this. What is your full name? what is your grade, the school that you attend, as well as your contact number. So please ensure that you contact us to receive your prize. Okay, now we have the IDM quiz, which we had just run during this live program. And I had told you that we will award prizes in three categories. These prizes are sponsored by the Actuarial Society of South Africa. In first place, in the category of grade eight to nine, we have Lebo Khan Sentle, who is a grade nine student at Florida Park High. Congratulations to you for your excellent performance in today's quiz. In the grade 10 to 12 category, our first place winner is Kaylee Campbell, um, who was also the overall winner of today's quiz. So congratulations to you, Kaylee, who is in grade 12 at Herschel Girls. And in the undergraduate category, we have Merrin, who is an undergraduate student at the University of Johannesburg. So congratulations to the three winners from the various categories for the quiz. Please remember, in order to redeem this prize, you will also have to email me at serene.rathilal at 
and you need to tell me what prize you are claiming, which I will verify. You need to submit your full name, your grade, your institution or school, as well as your contact number. And then the Actuarial Society of South Africa will contact you to have your prize sent to you. While I am talking about this, I want to remind you about what our speaker, Greg Becker, had announced earlier, and that is that mytutor.chat is running um, an online quiz to celebrate the International Day of Mathematics on the 14th of March. So you simply need to go to mytutor.chat, you need to search for the Maths for Everyone International Day of Maths quiz, click on it to sign up and participate on the quiz on Tuesday, the 14th of March. The more you answer and the more answers that you get correctly, the greater your chance of winning a prize. This prize will also be sponsored by the Actuarial Society of South Africa and you will get an opportunity to win a 500 Rand gift voucher. So we strongly encourage you to participate on the 14th of March for this quiz. And that is it from me. But now I have the opportunity to introduce you to another speaker. And that is Ms. Lindiwe Matlali, who is actually the founder as well as the CEO of one of our partners, and that is Africa Team Geeks. So Africa Team Geeks is an organization that teaches children and unemployed youth how to code and exposes them to computer science and inspires a future generation of technology entrepreneurs and innovators. Ms. Lindiwe Matlali is a trailblazer. She has been distinguished with various awards, such as the Commonwealth Point of Light Recognition Award, um, which is bestowed by Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, um, Motsepe Foundation Sh Shining Light Award. She was named a Schwab Foundation Social Innovator. She is an MTN woman in ICT com community builder and so much more. I'm now going to hand over to Lindiwe. I believe that um, she is unable to switch on her video, but let's all listen carefully to what she has to share as she closes off our IDM program today. Over to you, Lindiwe. Um, good morning. Um, thank you so much, um, Serene, and um, good morning to all the, the guests. I am uh, honored to be to come and be part of, of, of this um, event. It's really something that is really special to me because I love mathematics and I really believe in the in the power of mathematics and also, you know, for me, how that can help us in developing not just South Africa, but um, Africa as a continent for us to be um, able to be innovative and globally competitive. Um, mathematics is not just numbers and equations, it's a tool for solving complex problems and transforming the world around us. And in Africa, where innovation and progress are critical for development, a career in mathematics can make all the difference. Um, mathematics is a language of logic and reasoning that provides a foundation for critical thinking, problem solving, and innovation. And pursuing a career in, in mathematics, our kids can unlock endless possibilities and create a brighter future um, for themselves and um, our community. And a career in, in mathematics for me is not just about solving the equations or crunching numbers. It's about developing the skills to think critically, analyze data and create in innovative solutions to some of the most pressing problems facing Africa today. Um, currently we are seeing um, the number of learners taking mathematics to be dwindling. And it's it's scary because it means that we will not be able to pivot from being a poor uh, country to actually being able to be competitive and creating opportunities for everybody in Africa to be able to have a better life. So in a world that is becoming increasingly complex and interconnected, Mathematics is more important than ever. So I wanna encourage you to pursue a career in, in mathematics because you will gain the skills and knowledge you need to navigate this changing landscape and create a better future for yourself. Um, and one thing that is, is important that sometimes we don't even talk about it more is that 
mathematics is the foundation of all science and technology and in and it's critical for driving innovation and progress especially i mean specifically in africa because as africans we have to think about you know the future that you, you you kids can have for yourselves and i feel like sometimes you don't always have to actually i think you should not be looking at us you should be seeing yourselves as the change that will make sure that you create the future that you want and i think if you pursue career in maths you can become the architects of your own destiny and transform our continent for the better. In a world where technology is advancing, math is the key to unlocking the power of data and driving innovation. And we hear so many times that, um, I think I was uh, attending a, a, a conference in New York last year and somebody from the World Bank said something like, you know, most countries, they are, um, you know, they are economically rich before they become data rich. For Africa, we are data rich before we, do, we become economically rich. And that means those with the economic, um, you know, uh, or rather the resources are able to then take our data and build so solutions that they then come back and sell to us, which I see it as another way um, basically of what are called tech exploitation, like we've seen with our you know, um, our resources in terms of our mineral resources being able to be taken from Africa to, to the world and come back and be sold to us at the premium, while as Africans, we are not able to, to, to gain anything from that. So I want you to understand why it's important for you to actually pursue maths, even when it's hard to allow yourself to be patient because maths is the foundation of all modern science and it's critical for driving progress in the innovation that we need. And I'm really encouraging you that you must take this because in a world where knowledge is power, mathematics is the key to unlocking the, the potential. So I want to encourage you, encourage you today to continue and study maths and look for support. If you need support, I mean, I think all the, the speakers that are here will be more than happy to find um, the people that can support you and mentor you if you need one or tutor you if you need that support. But my my request and my plea is do not dump mathematics. And I'm so happy to be able to be here. And, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Lindy. Well, that was great and very inspirational. And I really hope they take from that. Do not dump mathematics. It's really important. It's the foundation for every single um, career that you can think about. Uh, Soshan, I'll hand it over to you. But from me, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you to the presenters for availing yourselves to answer all the questions that were posted on the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From me, with love. Bye bye. Thank you, Lingi. Uh, you know, my my big takeaway from today is after all the fun we've had, mathematicians are such cool people, as you can see. <laughs> and um, for all of you who have that little voice in your head telling you that I'm bad at maths or this is too difficult for me, all mathematicians have that voice and there are times where in all of our journeys we feel that maths is too difficult. The trick is to keep practicing and to overcome that fear. Uh, there is no such thing as somebody who's bad at mathematics. Thank you so much everyone for your participation today. It was such a lovely event. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and just a reminder of the event that's open on the 14th of uh, March, which you can now sign up to, um, which is, uh, yeah, I think it's on the screen now. Thank you very much, everyone. Happy calculating. Bye-bye. <laughs>